Hello and welcome to the Roofing Estimator Pro video training series. In this video we'll cover the transferring of data using standard CSV files. In version 2.1 of the Roofing Estimator Pro web-based software system, we've introduced functionality for importing and exporting of data from the system. This feature allows you to save time transferring data in and out of the system by automating a bulk transfer of data and is available to be used for the supplier, product, and customer data modules of the system. Before we get started with a live demonstration of how to use the import and export modules, we need to cover some basic fundamentals around importing and exporting data, along with the file layouts that will be used to transfer data between two systems. An import file allows you to transfer data from a third-party system into your system. The file contains data that is formatted in such a way that the receiving system knows what to do with it when it gets imported. In the case of the Roofing Estimator Pro, we will be concerned with importing customer data files, supplier data files, and product data files. An export file is just the opposite of an import file. It allows you to extract data out of your system so that it can be imported into a third-party system. Just like import files, the data is formatted in a way that the receiving system will know what to do with it once it's exported. We'll also be supporting the exporting of customer data files, supplier data files, and product data files. A common file format that is generally used for the transferring of data via import and export files is the CSV file format. CSV stands for Comma Separated Values, and basically what that means is that each line in the file represents a single row or record of data, and the columns within the row, also known as fields, are represented by separating each with a comma between them. Additionally, some CSV files put a special row of data in the first row of the file, known as a header row. This special row lists all the names of the field and allows for somebody who looks at the file to know what type of data is listed in each column position in the remaining rows in the file. We will look at a sample file now so you can see what a CSV file looks like. As you can see, a CSV file is just a plain text file that is human readable. The sample we are looking at contains contact records for a group of six people. Each line of the file represents a single row of data and each value in between two commas represents a field within that data record. Notice in this file that there is a header row in the first line of the file which tells the positions of each of the fields within the record starting with the first name and ending with the country. It is important to note that each row contains the same number of fields and when a field is empty there will be two consecutive commas that denote no value in that position as can be seen for some records which do not contain a second line in their address. This file may be human readable but it is nonetheless not too easy on the eyes. Here is a table based representation of the same exact CSV data as it would be rendered when the CSV file is opened in Microsoft Excel. Note that there are still blank values in certain address 2 fields and also that the third data record does not have a value in the last name column. Okay. Moving on to the live demonstration portion of this video, we'll start with data exports. Here, we will perform a number of steps, such as accessing the export module, optionally applying a data filter that can be either simple or complex in nature, exporting the data out of the system in a CSV file, and then reviewing the resulting data file. So without further delay, let's perform a couple of exports out of the system. The first export I will show is for exporting a list of suppliers from the system. To do so, you need to navigate to the File menu, then to the Data Exports submenu, and then to the Export Suppliers menu option. When the screen is loaded, we are now presented with the options for the supplier export. Here, I have the option to include a header row at the top of the file containing all the field names. Next, I can choose the file name I would like to specify for the resulting export file. It's filled in by default, but I can specify a different name if I would like to. In this case, I'll change the name to suppliersexport.csv. I also have the ability to choose to add a filter if I would like. For this example, we will not apply a filter, so I'll leave this area untouched. Finally, there's a button to click which will perform the actual export. Once I click that button, I will be presented with a file to download containing the records I just exported from the system. And here we can see that file with all the fields in the header row and the related data underneath for all of the suppliers that we just exported from the system. Next, to perform a more complex export, we'll export customers, but we'll specify that we only want to export customers from a specific city. To do so, you need to navigate to the File menu, then to the Data Exports menu, and then to the Export Customers submenu. When the screen is loaded, we're presented with the options for the customer export. Here I have the same option to include a header row at the top of the file containing all the field names. 
Next, I can choose a file name I'd like for the resulting export. It's filled in by default, but I can specify a different name if I'd like to. And in this case, I'll change the name to customersexport.csv. I also have the ability to choose to add a filter if I'd like, and for this example we will apply a filter, so I'll click the Add Expression button located with the green plus in the filter bar. This will give me a new filter criteria row. From here I need to choose a field, a condition, and a value. For our example I'll choose the field City, the condition equal to, and the value South Portland. Once I tab out of the field, for the value, the filter expression is shown below in parentheses, telling me what the text-based filter that is that will be applied to the export. Finally, there's a button to click which will perform the actual export. Once I click that button, I'll be presented with a file to download that will contain the records I've just exported. There they are. In the final session of the live demonstration portion of this video, we will show data imports. Here, we'll perform a number of steps such as accessing the import module, preparing and uploading the file, mapping the columns of the import file into those of the REP system, providing the default values if necessary to append the records coming in from the third party system, and then importing and reviewing the results. So now let's perform a couple of imports into the system. The first import I will show is for importing a list of customers into the system. To do so, you need to navigate to the File menu, then the Data Imports submenu, then the Import Customers option. When the screen is loaded, we're presented with the options for the customer import. The import process is broken down into a three-step wizard process. Starting in Step 1, the options include if there's a header row at the top of the file containing all the field names and also a file selector to allow you to browse to the import file where it is stored on your hard drive. Once you click to select the file on a hard drive, it will show up above the select box along with the delete button to remove that file. At this point, click on the load file button to move to the next step in the wizard. For step two, we'll be able to preview the data that was loaded into the file and use that preview to appropriately map the columns of the file into the columns of the REP system. For each of the REP columns, you'll be able to choose a column from the imported file where the system should retrieve the data. Once you go through each of the fields and specify a column in the preview file, you can move on by clicking the Import Data button. I'll choose these fields appropriately so that they match. And again, these fields in this drop-down list correspond with these fields from this preview file. If the preview file does not contain data for a specific REP column, just leave that column blank with the Choose Column value selected. If REP can provide a suitable default value for this field, it will do so automatically. In the final step, we get to review the results of the actual import. Here, we will see a summary of the number of rows in the file and the number of rows that were actually imported and those that were considered exceptions. For the exceptions, we'll have a detailed note as to why they could not be imported into the system. To conclude this video, we will import suppliers from a CSV file to show how to provide an additional default value during the column mapping step of the wizard. To do so, you need to navigate to the File menu, the Data Imports tab, and the Import Suppliers menu option. When the screen is loaded, we're presented with the options for the supplier import. As with the customer import example, the imports process is broken down into a three-step wizard. In step one, the options include if there's a header row at the top of the file containing all the field names, and is also a file selector to allow you to browse the import file where it's stored on your hard drive. Once you select the file on the hard drive, it'll appear above in the select box, along with the delete button to remove that file. At this point, click the load file button to move to the next step in the wizard. For step two, we'll be able to preview the data that was brought in, and appropriately map the columns of the file into the REP system. Note that the supplier import module also requires the setting of a default payment terms. This allows you to select a payment terms value that will automatically be assigned to all records coming into the system. Once you go through the column mapping and default values, you can move on by clicking the Import Suppliers button. Here we will see the results of the actual import, and we'll see a summary of the number of rows in the file and the number of exceptions that happened. For the exceptions, we'll see a detailed reason as to why they couldn't be imported into the system. In this case, in line 4, field company name is required to import the supplier record, so we couldn't import that one. And the last step is to actually view the data that was imported into the system. We can go look at the customers we imported by clicking on the customers icon in the toolbar and navigating to the very end of the file, where we'll be able to see the most recent customers that were added to the system. And we'll see that the last customer is Larry Jones and we can see that his customer record was brought in 
and automatically formatted for us and loaded in. And this corresponds with the last person, Larry Jones, in the CSV customer file, 228 Broadway, South Portland, Maine. 228 Broadway, South Portland, Maine. Okay, this concludes our video on importing and exporting data. Thanks again for your time and for using the Roofing Estimator Pro web-based system.